coach right here to your left. Okay. Coach, I wanted to ask you about a player that uh, has entered the transfer portal. Jamil Muhammad had a great spring game, uh, mm -hmm. kind of killed it for you guys in the spring game. Right. And then he went and entered the transfer portal, I think a few weeks later. Uh, what did he say to you? And what did you kind of make of that decision to do that? Well, we, we always talk about finding the right fit, right opportunity. I've got uh, two other young men that are from Huntsville, and Huntsville has been good to us. Um, you know, I mean, Jamil had a great spring, man. He did a great job. I just think, you know, I man, for him, okay, I man, he wanted the opportunity to play now. You know, and when you look at, you know, I mean, the reality of college football, uh, you know, it's somewhat microwave a little bit, man, but he's talented. He's going to go someplace, and he's going to play right now. But, I mean, I, I've, got, I've got good quarterbacks in our system. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm traditional when you talk about, you know, trying to raise those quarterbacks, you know, I mean, through your system. Uh, uh, at some point in time, Jamil Muhammad is going to step on the field, and when people get a chance to see him, he's going to be as dynamic as any quarterback, you know, out there. So if you're looking for a quarterback, I mean, you need to go get him because he's a good player. Coach on the end, second row. Yes. Hey, hey, Coach, Bruce Marshall, Sports Byline USA. Hey, How Bruce. You doing? Quick question about um, Stanford, because you had worked there for a few years with Coach Shaw, and I right. thought – Stanford sort of set the template, I think, for a private school in a big conference like that. And one of the things they did was develop this sort of national recruiting, also because they played, and you were there when you coached, I mean, Notre Dame, and they went back Midwest a lot. Right. And I know, I think you're trying to set that sort of a footprint for Vandy, but scheduling-wise, I don't think you guys have come out West in a long, long time. I could be wrong about that. Do you have any thoughts, is the future scheduling, do you want to expand it more? And does that help you think develop that base a little bit wider? Well, Bruce, we do have some games coming up. I mean, we head out to Hawaii in a couple of years. We head out to Stanford, you know I mean, I believe. So we'll, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to get out there. But, you know, I, I, I first of all have to give credit to, to, to Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern. I think he's been in his position much longer, you know I mean, than David. Um, I mean, he's been winning, okay, and competing, okay, at this level. Uh, you know, for a long time, and I think you got to give credit where credit is due. Now, with that being said, I think David Shaw has done it as good as anybody in the country. When you talk about being at a school that has an academic, um, uh, you know, reputation and, and and has some things that 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 are different than the schools uh, in their conference, but. Uh, I continue to have conversations with David Cutcliffe, who I believe has been phenomenal in terms of what he's been able to do. I mean, you see it with Clawson, you know, man, been happening over at Wake Forest. So I think what's happening in college athletics overall is that parents are starting to start, starting to become better consumers along with the student athletes. They don't they don't want just a four year experience, man. They want a forty year, fifty year experience. How do you build your brand? How do you build your network? And it takes time to go through that process, especially for me, trying to get blue collar players. And I think that's that's how Pat built it. That's how you know uh, uh, Jim and David. Okay, men have built it at Stanford, and that's the way I'm building it at Vanderbilt. So here we go. Coach, to your left on the end of the cameras. Hey, Gerhard Mathigani, WEAC. You, doing? you mentioned Huntsville a minute ago, but you're also able to sign Justin Harris out of Etowah, Alabama. What were some of the things you've seen <laughs> from his game and some of the things you're optimistic about as far as his career? I'm so excited about this class, okay? But when you talk about Justin, Justin has has A plus ball skills, and that's a NFL term. You know, I mean, when you're going through scouting, man, you're looking for guys with A plus ball skills, guys that can change the game. He's dynamic, speed, uh, length, athleticism, high football IQ. Um, this class has it in spades. But I'll tell you, I mean, he, he, I think a lot of people missed on this young man. And, and here's what happens: everybody talks about the four and five star player, but you know, you 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 have to develop in the four and five star talent. And so that, that's, that's really what we try to do, man. We try to take good players and develop, uh, just like you've seen in Keyshawn Vaughn, Jerry Pinckney, and, and, and Kalijah Lipscomb, we develop players at our spot. So I, I think when you see Justin, uh, you know, in, in two or three years, uh, man, we're going to be sitting here talking about how dynamic um, and he is and, and, and how impactful he's going to be on the game in the SEC. Coach in the middle here, on the end. Yeah. Coach uh, Quinn Lawson for WFF in Huntsville. Yeah. Uh, you also, going back to the transfer portal, you added Malik Langham from Florida. Talk about uh, yeah. what he means to the program and what his role will be. Malik's a dog, okay? I mean, I, I looked at Malik, you know, coming out. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, we, we didn't have the, 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 the opportunity at the time, you know, to get Malik. But I, I, I tell you what, I think in the process of recruiting, if you're real, if people get a chance to see who you are, you know, man, sometimes, you know, man, young people, 
uh, you know, they, they, they make decisions based on things that, that, that really aren't relationship based, man. It's about, it's about, you know, man, bigger things or in their mind, better things. And then, and then I think, man, they get to places and they figure out for themselves exactly, you know, who they are, what they see and whether or not it's a fit. And I think it comes down to personality fit. Okay, man, you can go to a place, and we've had young men come to our place, and you know what? It just wasn't the right personality fit. You know, all the way around, it just, it, you know, for, for whatever reason. It doesn't make any program bad, but, but once you're there and you're, you're, you're sleeping there, okay, man, and those four walls are closing in on you, and you're sitting down and you're, you're, you're looking at friendships and relationships and trying to figure out whether or not, okay, man, these guys are my guys or whether or not it's just a fit, it changed. I mean, it changed for him, and it changes for, for, for young men across the country. I think sometimes young men can stay in bad situations, okay? I mean, in his case, man, he just, he just chose to figure it out, and he moved on, and, 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 you know, I'm happy to have him. And when you talk about the transport portal, you know, man, he, 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 he was in the transport portal. It surprised me now. I mean, man, it surprised me, and we went right at it. And uh, I, I think his parents turned away a bunch of phone calls. Uh, man, but they took ours, and I think that was pretty cool. Coach, to your left at the camera bank here. Hey, Coach, good morning. Uh, yeah. Jacques Duce, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, yeah. You've got a big home game. LSU's going to Nashville for the first time in a decade, I think. Um, if, your thoughts on that game? And although your stadium is one of the smaller at atmospheres, you feel like you can create the kind of atmosphere to, to pull off a big win like that? Man, it's about what happens between the white lines. You know, you, you, you talk about atmosphere, you got to get on the football field and play a game. And I think, you know, that's what Coach Ogeron is all about, and that's what we're about too. Man, we're going to line up and play some football. Man, I, I've, I've got nothing but respect, uh, you know, for him and his program. But, you know, really it starts with Georgia. So we're going to start with Georgia, then we're going to go to Purdue, and then we'll play LSU at our place. And, you know, all three of those games will have a lot of excitement and, and fanfare. So let's get it. To your right, Coach, second row. Yes, Coach sir. John Wilson with KBTX TV in College Station, Texas. Do you like the fact that you'll open the season with a conference game that, that's so big in Georgia? John, I love it. I got a lot of respect for Kirby Smart. Um, and we, we spent some time together uh, this summer, okay, at the Nike Coaches Trip. And, and we, we, I felt like we were kindred, kindred spirits, man. We were, we're, we're, you know, brothers from another mother. I mean, it, it, it truly felt that way. Um, uh, I believe that this schedule sets up well for us. I mean, you open with Georgia. It's a conference game. Um, I think I've got a pretty good football team, but it's untested. So we get a chance to, to test it. I know Kirby's going to bring in, you know, maybe his crew. They'll be ready to play. Um, and I'll get a chance to see Cortez Hankton, uh, you know, my former receivers coach, man, who's now at Georgia. Um, and he gets a chance to see the gang. I mean, it, it, it's, it's going to be a fun game. It's going to be a lot on it. And, you know, man, we look to play good football. So do they. Coach, to your left, third row. Uh, yeah, Coach Jamal Kennedy with WSFA in Montgomery. Uh, you had the luxury of watching Kyle Shermer at the quarterback position, and now you have a new quarterback. Uh, when, you, when you talk about that in the SEC East with, with so many established quarterbacks already, what do you think uh, your new quarterback comes in and, and, and makes himself stand out this year? Well, I, I think that's the great thing about our game. You know, I mean, the quarterback's got to play well, but it's also about the guys around him. And I think, you know, uh, Whoever gets the quarterback position or wins the starting job is going to have a pretty, pretty good supporting cast. We're pretty deep at all positions, tight end, receiver, wide out. I mean, I mean uh, running back, doesn't matter. Um, I, I, I believe we're deeper in the quarterback room. So uh, he's just got to manage the game. He's got to make sure man, that he can make the plays that, that he's capable of making. He can't be Kyle Shermer, and I, don't, I, I really don't expect him to be. Um, both of these guys can run. And I think that's a different dimension that we bring to the game in 2019 that we haven't had in, in, in a couple of years. A quarterback who's capable of taking the ball man, and going 35, 45 yards. And, and, and I think that really changes the game in terms of how teams defend you. So uh, he's got to play to his strengths. Whichever one of these quarterbacks winds up being under center, he's got to play to his strengths. And if he does that, he'll, 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 he'll find himself playing good football and hopefully being ranked amongst the top quarterbacks in this conference. To your right, against the wall, please. Derek, you've taken advantage probably more than any other coach of this time to get your message out here at Media Days. In right. this era where it seems like a lot of coaches kind of duck the public, duck the media, what's made you want to prioritize getting your message out like this? Well, my job is to resource young men. My, my job is to make sure, man, that I can, I, I can push their brand, you know, man, as best I can. And, and, and that's what it's about. You know, I... I I was hired to coach a football team, but I was also hired to service young men, okay? And, and, and this is a platform and an opportunity to do just that. 
okay? Uh, you know, Derek Mason gets an opportunity, man, man, to get in front of the cameras, but we have, you know, good players in our program like Dimitri Moore, Tay Daly, Frank Coppett, Dial, you know, Odin Dengbo. Uh, man, we, we've got guys in our program that don't get a chance to get, you know, in the recognition uh, that Keyshawn, you know, Kalaja and Jared are getting right now. So, I mean, it's my job to make sure that I can speak to, uh, you know, who these young men are, the things that they do both on and off the field, and, and hopefully be able to push their brand as well as the brand of Vanderbilt football. Coach, to your right on the second row, we'll take this question, and then the one to his right. Joe Bombo, SB Nation Radio. How you doing, Coach? How you doing? Looking great, man. You too. All right, well, you're one of the only top – the power five teams with a running back that was top three in rushing in mm -hmm. his conference, a receiver that was top three in receiving, and a tight end that was top three in receiving at their positions respectively. Why don't you get guys get any sort of consideration when we talk about contenders in the SEC East? Well, I, I believe, man, you got to go back, and that's something I mean, that's probably been, uh, you know, historically an issue at Vanderbilt. I think James Franklin did a great job, man, of, of eventually, you know, man, pushing the bar and getting guys like Jordan Matthews and Casey Hayward uh, uh, looked at and, and, and people starting to recognize because of how, how hard those guys played and competed. Well, for us, um, it goes probably back to my first year, 2014. You know, man, we didn't do well and everybody says, okay, man, they're probably right back to same old Vandy. And since then, man, we've sort of been put in that box. But here's what I do know. We haven't finished last in our conference. Okay, man, since year one. So, I mean, looking at players and evaluating play over, over, over you know, anything else is, is, is what's really supposed to happen. But I think there's a bias, uh, you know, at times about Vanderbilt and what we do. That's okay. Hey, when it's all said and done, it still hasn't stopped players at Vanderbilt University from going to the NFL and getting degrees. And we've been doing that in spades. So, you know, man, I'm excited about what we bring to the table. And, you know, man, with that being said, okay, these guys are going to continue, man, to perform. It just so happens, too, that when you look at Pinckney, you know, man, Kalijah and, and, and Keyshawn Vaughn, you know, two of those guys are fifth-year players, one's a fourth-year player. You know, Jordan Matthews came back for his senior year and I think, you know, broke almost every record that there was in the SEC. I think there's something to be said about junior and senior football players coming back, okay, man, and being able to get on that stage because the accolades when you perform come your way. Okay, Coach, you're Hey, right. Coach. Rachel Barbo, CBS hey. XM. How hey, you Rachel. doing? Good. Um, there's been so many rule changes recently in college football. I mean, we talked just the other day with Steve Shaw about um, how they're going to have these – uh, you know, considerations for targeting. You have the, the four games and keep your red shirt. You have the transfer portal. Right. You, we have the, the possibility of name and likeness coming down the pike. There's so many rule changes. I'm, I'm curious about your thoughts on which one has been the most impactful for you and has it, have you had to change the way that you've approached your players or coach because of these rule changes? You know what, I, I've always said whatever the rules are, okay, we're gonna play the game Within the, within the rules, period, and that's it. So I, I, don't, I don't get caught up in that because there's so much other work that's gotta get done. You know, the rules are the rules. I think sometimes, uh, and, and rightfully so, um, I think there's a time and a place to have an opinion, you know, on those things. It's generally during the off season where, you know, some of those things can be talked through, talked out, you know, worked through, uh, some schematical adjustments. But, you know, once we're into this thing, man, it's go time. And so right now it's go time for me. I, I, I think all the rules are good. I think all the rules are either for safety or, or, or for players. And last time I checked, we all work for players. Okay, so with that being said, as long as we can continue to provide a healthy, uh, you know, my college experience, both on and off the field for the student athlete, then let's do that. Coach, one final question right here to your right by the cameras. Hi, former Alabama long snapper Scott Myers just transferred to Vanderbilt. How has he impacted the team? Well, I mean, he's competing right now. Uh, you know, I mean, Scott, you know, has an opportunity to, to compete with a young guy in Zach Drevno. Um, who, who hasn't played yet. Scott's been in ball games, and I think any time you get a chance to compete, that's what you're looking for. So, like I said, you know, the, the, the grad transfer opportunity man, has provided us with guys who had an opportunity to step in the program, have experience, and experience is the thing you can't buy. But now, now, man, it looks like you can go get it in the open market, and that's exactly what we did. So, uh, I, I feel like Scott's going to have a great opportunity to compete, but, man, he's, he's got a lot of work ahead of him, and, you know, he's got a strong competition in front of him. Can, can, can you take this question? He's had his hand up for a while. Okay. 
Coach, you obviously are right next door to Tim Corbin and the baseball baseball team. Have you been able to take anything from his coaching style? Had you have any conversations with him to take away to implement into your own program? Every day, you know, Tim Corbin is best. I mean, bar none. Um, uh, not just not just a, a, a terrific baseball coach. He's just a terrific man. You know, I, I've I've seen him you know, go long and hard for every player that's come through his program. And, and, and that means a lot to me because I feel the same way about my players. You know, I mean, he cares about uh, the details. He cares about the little things. Um, to watch their run this year, to see that team play high, play low, play from in front, play from behind. They're truly reflective of their head coach. Believe that. You know, when you see how they line up, you know, for the Pledge of Allegiance, Okay, or or, or 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 to hear, you know, like what's happening with happening with the national anthem, man. It's it's really amazing to see those guys line up. I've never seen a coach, okay, start okay, my opening season teaching his guys how to celebrate. He teaches them how to jump on a pile. No detail is lost with that team, and I think that's why you can see them go down in game one and 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 come back and win two games and have a chance at a national title. So there's a lot to be learned from the man. There's a lot to be learned from the coach. There's a lot to be learned from his program. Coach Mason, thank you very much. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you.